Nintendo stock plummets 17% after old information surfaces that Nintendo doesn't actually make Pokemon Go. Does it matter? We'll be talking about all that and more after coffee. Ah. Okay, so actually one of the first things that I wanted to tell you was that I got a haircut. One of the main reasons that I'm making this video right now is that my hair will never look this good ever again. And that's not because I'll never get a haircut this good again, but because this is how the guy made it after he cut it, which means that when I wash it tonight, and I try to do it tomorrow, it won't look like this. Or at least, I'll try and it won't look like this. I'm gonna be drinking more of the Tanzania Asante. Thanks to the subscriber who let me know that Asante means thank you. I think he said it means thank you in uh, Swahili. I believe he said it was Swahili. I, that's very, very cool information. Didn't know that. Thank you very much for letting me know. Let's have some more of this Asante coffee. Also, I realized that I said that these videos are gonna be a little more chilled out. So I'm trying to chill out, but as soon as I turn the camera on, I get a little bit excited. All right, let's put the coffee in. So Nintendo stock is down 17%, which is interesting because apparently this is old information. Nintendo said from the start that they don't make Pokemon Go. This is just investors who don't really know a lot about Nintendo or care much about Nintendo. They just see Nintendo as a thing that might become valuable, and that's why they've plowed all their money into buying their stocks. Why is that a big deal? Well, when Nintendo stocks went up 25%, they got a lot of money out of it, which we all thought, you know, okay, they can plow that in back into development for future games. But as a result, and I don't really know, again, I'm not an expert when it comes to the stock market, it sounds like when it dropped down another 17%, they lost $6.4 billion. That's a lot of money to just disappear. They probably thought, okay, when we finally announce that we don't actually make Pokemon Go and that the Pokemon company is only like 30 or 35% our thing, we know the price is gonna go down, so we're gonna have to buy and sell stocks accordingly so that we don't lose too much money when we know the moment that it's going to change in value. So actually, they probably they probably did something clever about it. I don't know. I, I do want to talk a little more about Pokemon Go because I've had more opinions after I've been playing it a lot. If you've been watching videos on Let's Play Japan, we've got a few gameplay videos on there with me and Kathy Cat, or Kathy Cat and I. So if you're enjoying those gameplay videos, do check out on Let's Play Japan. Obviously, you'll still be able to watch me play it here on Nihongo Gamer as well. There'll be slightly more vloggy style videos, but you will get to see them. Well, you will get to see me playing Pokemon Go. Here's a conclusion that I've come to recently about Pokemon Go, though. It's not so much that I hate Pokemon Go or dislike Pokemon Go or have any issue with the game. In fact, when I think about Pokemon Go as a game, I think it's actually quite brilliant. It's a really great idea, and everyone who says positive things about it, they're all legitimate, legitimate facts that you can make friends through it, you can discover new places with Pokemon Go. All of these things are 100% true and, and can't really be disputed. However, I finally realized what my problem is with Pokemon Go. I think the problem for me is that I don't like any product that has so much control over people. That includes things like the iPhone and famously, again, I'm not holding it now, this is my Galaxy Note Edge. Famously, I've been using this for the past two years rather than actually using my iPhone because the Galaxy Note just has features that I liked and I don't base my phone decision, my phone purchasing decisions on what's really, really popular or the thing that everyone must have. I'm, I choose it because the Galaxy Note had a pen and I really have enjoyed for the past two years using a pen. My only issue with it really is that it is a little bit too big and it's not as convenient for certain features. There's certain features that I really enjoy about iOS that I would prefer to move back to. What I want to say about Pokemon Go is that when I see how much power it has over people and when you think about like there's that website called Pokemon... Pokemon Navi? Poke... Navi? Pokevision. All right. When you think about these apps like Pokevision, it's interesting because once everyone starts learning all the tips and tricks about Pokemon Go, they're gonna start becoming experts about it. And then partly the relaxed nature of just discovering Pokemon every now and then is gonna turn into a real frenzy and competitive game. Again, that can be a good thing as well. But what's getting to me is how much control the game has over people. Here's how I think about it. Owning a mobile app 
is a little bit like printing your own currency. By deciding which card, which Pokemon, which character is the super rare, which ones are the rare and which ones are the common and which ones are ultra common, you are practically printing money because now you can say this one is an in-app purchase for $100 and this one is an in-app purchase for $5 or you know something something like that or you know whenever people have gacha they're going to have to roll and there's a much lower chance of getting the really rare ones that's why Pokemon Go announcing that they're going to introduce trading into the game really I mean, this is the start. People could actually start trading Pokemon for money. So I start to get worried, like, okay, actually, these are not just fake characters, and we can't just say, oh, it's just a game, don't take it seriously. People could very well say, hey, I want that Pokemon that you worked for many hours to get, or you got it because you live in a certain area. I'll give you $10 for it. I'll give you $100 for it. I'll give you $1,000 for it. There, this is where it starts to be like a company that did make a game before, like for a fixed price, is now entering into an area where it's practically they're working with their own in-game currency. Again, I don't think it's a bad thing. In fact, when you think about it, with the original Pokemon games on the original Game Boy, you could have also paid people for that, actually. that You could have considered those Pokemon as rarity and non-rarity. The games didn't involve exactly where you live. Everyone had a sort of level chance, I feel. Whereas Pokemon Go, it could just be that you live in a certain country. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. And let me just point out as well that these are not fully formed opinions and this is exactly how I feel about Pokemon Go. I'm just thinking about it kind of out loud. Essentially, getting to the point is that I feel uncomfortable whenever a company has a lot of power and they know they have a lot of power, only because they have the potential to exploit it. That doesn't mean they're going to. I'm just explaining why I have reservations when I see that a company has that much power. That's all, that's all it is really. Put the coffee in. Alright, so I think I'm getting a little bit better at making this coffee. Apparently, what I'm supposed to do is start in the middle and then move to the outside, but not overfill it. I think I may have overfilled it. Oh, oh, but I've got it better that time. Look, so I'm actually... I tend to put too much water in the middle, which makes the whole thing kind of sink in the middle. But what I really should be doing, I think, is I'm supposed to be trying to get the coffee to go around the outside as soon as possible and not put too much in so it doesn't sink in the middle and then after I've waited a couple seconds I can move in and now oh, it's still bubbling see that's another nice thing if you got really fresh beans it tends to it tends to bubble and you can see the air coming out of it and oh I never get it to do this this is this is quite rare for me so I'm quite proud that I'm able to get the coffee to do this and I want to do quite a lot at the moment so that I can build a nice filter around the edges. Very random video this one, it's kind of talking about Nintendo, kind of talking about Pokemon Go. Also I want to talk a little bit about skating. I've actually went uh, practicing skating, something I would love to do and something that I also really believe in is the fact that doing something every day, you know, it makes it very difficult to not get good at it. So, and one of the main things I find with music or pl like playing guitar or drawing or programming or any of the things that I like to do, I tend to find that if I can do it every single day, I get exponentially better rather than if I did it like once a week. And especially with skateboarding, I wish that I had the time to do it every single day. But unfortunately, I've just chosen probably the worst time of the year to actually start skateboarding because in Japan, it's kind of typhoon season. Usually at the sort of July period, or pretty much all of July, pretty much all of July, there's quite a lot of rain. It's very difficult to plan outings because you don't know when it's going to rain and when it's not going to rain. And essentially, if you want to practice skateboarding every day, July is not really the best time to start. Ooh, 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 looks so good. But Pokemon Go. I mean, I do really like the game when I get it out, but I certainly don't want to be in a situation where the game is controlling me. And ah, you know what? I finally remembered what it is I've been thinking about that I wanted to say for quite a long time. Games where they used to be quite self-contained entities have moved on to being these things that kind of pervade, invade, and interrupt our lives. 
And is that a good thing? And is that a bad thing? And in, in many ways, it's kind of good because now we don't spend maybe half an hour or an hour playing a game and getting really stuck into it and searching for the save point. Now we can kind of enjoy games in a more casual, on and off basis. What bothers me about that, however, so there's always a flip side, we have really built up this culture of idling, or rather, being incapable of idling. Ah, it's still good. Sometimes if you leave the coffee for a few days, or maybe a week, you start to notice the flavor changing, but these beans are really fresh. For example, when I'm at a restaurant with a person, and that person decides to go to the restroom, I'm sat there thinking that, you know, as they leave, I instantly re used to reach for my phone, and I thought, oh, I gotta check Facebook, right? Or I've gotta check Twitter, I've gotta check the comments, I've gotta, I've gotta like something, I've gotta see a cat video. For a while, I was like, why am I doing this? It really bothered me because I, I became very conscious that I was doing it. And then when whoever I was waiting for would come back, I would realize I hadn't really achieved anything. And so this will actually expand in scale over time because if you do it every single time a person goes to the bathroom or every time you get on the bus or maybe just waiting for the coffee to brew, those are moments that are yours, that it's your time. And we're always searching for time. I don't know about you, but I am always desperate for time. And usually I get to about 11 o'clock or 12 midnight and I think, oh, there are so many things that I still wanted to do. And I'll end up staying up till 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. just to get those things done. When actually I was wasting probably a good hour or so during the day doing pointless idle things. We could have that time back. If we can learn to control ourselves in our idle times, we can use that time to do all those things that we wish we could do, so that by the end of every day, we're not f left with that feeling of, oh, there were so many things I wished I had done, but I just didn't have time, because the truth is, every day we have 24 hours, and yes, we sleep for a lot of that time, but I, would, I reckon that if you took away all the time that you spent reading Facebook and checking Twitter and of course these things are important especially for me as a as a, a YouTube creator I have to do these things eventually but to have diligence um, now I think diligence is the word that I was looking for if you're diligent about the way and the times that you spend using social media you could get the time back which it's not being stolen from us but it feels that way sometimes it feels like why is the world taking time away from me? Actually, it's just that we're not prepared for it. SNS, social networking, games, all of these mobile apps, all of this technology which invades our lives and interrupts our day-to-day -day activities, they're all great things, but we probably need to, or personally at least, I want to become more diligent about the way I use it. And that's why I have a lot of issues with Pokemon Go is because of the way that it interrupts our lives and it makes itself so urgent because you can only catch this Pokemon here and now whereas with a Nintendo 3DS for example and again I'm not saying that 3DS is better than mobile phones if you're a parent and you have a child and the child says I've got to catch this Pikachu if you say to the child can you put it on standby because maybe you know we've got to go and do this thing now or we're on our way to a family event and I don't want you to be playing the game. They can put it in standby mode and they can catch that Pokemon later. Games on consoles are a little bit better like that because they kind of stay in their place. Whereas anything on a mobile phone has that potential because of its always on, always connected ability. It can make itself feel so urgent to you that soon it can be the cause and source of issues between you and other people and you may not even realize that it happens until it's too late. Even though I know this stuff, I always, I have to like rediscover it. I think about it and I go, oh yeah, this is a problem. That's most of the stuff that I wanted to talk about today. I also wanted to mention that tomorrow I'll be in town again doing some filming for Let's Play Japan. So again, I've, I mean I mention it all the time but just remember that there will probably be videos on Nihongo Gamer and on Let's Play Japan probably playing Pokemon Go. I really love getting Pokemon Go out and thinking, okay, now we're gonna play Pokemon Go. But I, you know, what my issues tend to be with the Ugh, Pokemon Go is bothering me about this or it's got another notification about this or that Pokemon and 
you know, personally, that's just not how I want it to interact with my life. I want it to be, I'm playing Pokemon Go now, I'm making a video now, I play it, I do it, and then I, I set it back aside. But that's just person. That's just a personal thing. I wanted to mention also yesterday during my practice session while skating because I have been trying to practice skating as much as possible. I, as a beginner, I have been really enjoying in the comments people have been saying how to get better and all this. Something personally that has been really useful for me is one, I got new bushings, so my skateboard is a little bit tighter and it doesn't kind of waddle to the left and shake to the right too much when I bend down. And that is my biggest issue right now is when I get down lower to the ground, my ankles, I think my ankles are just not very strong. They tend to become a little less stable. And this is my issue. So recently I found that instead of coming down and then jumping, I it really helps for me to come down lower to the ground and just roll for a few seconds and get myself mentally prepared for the jump and then just launch from the ground. Whereas before, I always thought that a jump had to be a down-up motion. It's occurred to me recently and has helped me a lot while practicing to just get down on the ground and only do the up part rather than the down-up two-part motion. Because this part here becomes so short if you do the down-up, that part in the middle the, when you're down, that is the short moment where you run the risk of shaking the board left or right or, I don't know, changing direction and, well, basically that's what I do because I just don't have very strong ankles yet. I'm just, I just wish that I could practice every day but it rains every now and then. Hey, since we're on the camera, why don't we answer a few questions? So, let's check out the comments. Got a question here from The Greek Rage on my Minecraft uh, Pocket Edition 0.15 update video. He says, what did you use for recording the PS Vita screen? There is a previous video, if you haven't seen it, it was done probably a year and a half, almost two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, for a modification by Cats Kitty. If you type in Katsu Kitty into Google and you search for PS Vita capture card mod. You'll probably find the link to it. I'll put a video link obviously so you can find it. That's how I did it. It costs quite a lot of money though. I think each console that you do costs something like $200. I'll comment on the video when I went to the Pokemon Center and got chucked out. This is from Black Valkyrie 7 Nice vid. Lol, I think you got kicked out by the staff because you spoke fluent English. I saw a video of girls speaking Japanese recording Pokemon Go in the same shop and no one cared. The staff saw them too. It was even more crowded in that other vid that I saw. You know what? I don't know for sure if it's because I was speaking English, but I was standing right in the middle of the shop and I was very much getting in the way. And I think probably because of all of these features, you know, these things, one, I was speaking English, which makes it a little bit weird for the Japanese people around me, but also just I was being a bit of a nuisance right in the middle of the shop and I, I wish I hadn't. I was, just, I was just quite excited at the moment that no one had stopped me yet. It could also just be that in various different shops, some staff were just a little bit more lenient and other people aren't. Or, how about this for controversy? Maybe it's because Pokemon Go isn't Nintendo's thing. It's just a license that they gave to a different company. Maybe that's why they don't really like it. Maybe the Pokemon Center isn't really into Pokemon Go. But I don't think that's likely. A comment from my video Pokemon Go in Tokyo when I went to Ginza the other day. He says, it's from Retro High Def. He says, dude, you always have some very cool music in your videos. Do you make it yourself or is it some ready-made template music? And actually, most of the music that I used to use was all my own compositions, but recently I've been using a lot of the YouTube tracks. If you are a YouTube creator, it's available to you as well. You just go into YouTube Creator Studio, or I don't know what it is, YouTube Creator, the, the tab in the creator area, and you can find all of this free music. There's hundreds and hundreds of tracks that you can use completely royalty free. I try to use as much of my own personal music as, as I can, just to differentiate my channel from other people's channels, but sometimes it's just not possible. Possible. I think in the future I will continue to compose more and more music until eventually I have my own library so that I can only use my own music and still have as much variety and different moods and effects as I'm getting from using the YouTube library music tracks. Got a message here from The Ultimate. It says, really appreciate the videos, especially the longer vlog-like ones. Actually had a few comments like this recently. I'm doing as much as I can 
vlog type videos because I know that people enjoy seeing the Japanese video games but also in context showing the Japanese games and also it being in Japan and maybe life in Japan I realize that a lot of people like to see that especially as not living in Japan you want to see as much of the as to of the Tokyo of Tokyo or just general Japan as well I think just because I'm working as well every day it's very difficult for me to do the vlogs as every single day but I'm, I'll do as many as I can in general it'll probably just be the weekends where I'll be filming the vlogs but as, as much as I can do look forward to more vlogs because I plan on making more of them I, I really enjoy making the vlog type videos and that is pretty much a wrap I know that today's video was a little bit random but again just because I'm making coffee it's a good chance for me to make a video while I have a short break from doing other things so I thought why not share some time with you guys it's been really fun recently making the vlogs again there will be more vlogs in the future absolutely just time permitting and of course I really love the comments I'm also really enjoying answering comments sometimes it gets to the end of the video and I don't have time to also add comments to the end of the video but I'm really enjoying doing it so as much as I can at the end of videos I will be answering comments so if you have specific questions that haven't already been answered or something that you know you really just want to know feel free to ask it in the comments section in the show more section and I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video don't forget to comment subscribe share the links and all that great stuff and of course I'll see you in the next I feel like I've already said this. Am I saying it again? If I've said it again, I'm sorry. Goodbye. All right, so I'm in Ginza now. This is the kind of, to put it bluntly, the rich part of Tokyo. Unfortunately, I'm not posh enough to know how to pronounce a lot of really nice name brands. As far as I'm concerned, this place is called Bubblegary. There's the Pokemon in the road. I don't think, I don't think it's, you know, meant to be there or not meant to be there. Oh, whoa, 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 what is that?